And today we're going to take you through the process of using a malaria rapid diagnostic test to detect malaria. It's very important to use the test correctly to make sure that you diagnose malaria and so that the patient is treated for the right disease. Um, rapid diagnostic tests are very simple to use, but you need to follow very simple rules to make sure you get the correct result. In South Africa, we use the first response rapid diagnostic test, which tests specifically for falciparum malaria, which is the most common malaria found in South Africa. The rapid diagnostic test consists of many different components. So you need a marker pen, which you can write on your RDT. You need an unopened rapid diagnostic test in a sealed foiled pouch. You need to have the blood pipette sample for the sample. You need to have your alcohol swab, the buffer for the RDT, the lancet, and some cotton wool. In addition, once you start the test, you have to make sure that the rapid diagnostic test has some patient information written on the test before you start the test. But always have the patient's name, the date that the test was done, as well as the clinic name or clinic code. This ensures that the patient and the patient result can be linked to each other. When you get a first response rapid diagnostic test box, you need to ensure that you check two things what the temperature range is. So this test can be used at from one degree to 40 degrees. And the most important thing you need to check is the expiry date. And this is on the side of the box. And here you have got the date that it was manufactured. So it was manufactured in April in 2017. And then the most important thing is an expiry date. And this only expires in March 2019. So these tests are still valid and therefore you can use them. So to start the test, you have to first ask the patient which hand they use, and you use the non-dominant hand. So for example, if the person is right-handed, you always take the test from the left hand. Once you've selected the non-dominant hand, you select the finger. You can use either the middle finger, the index finger, or the ring finger. Once you have selected the finger, you need to clean the finger. You use the alcohol swab to clean the finger. So you need to first Tear open the alcohol swab. You get the hand and you're going to move from mid finger in one swoop over to the fingertip to make sure that you have cleaned the finger. You let the finger dry and then you are ready to start the test and get the lancet ready. You twist off the lid and then you have the sharp needle. This needle is what you use to prick the finger. You're going to hold the finger pretty tight so you get the blood pooling. You never prick at the centre, you're going to prick off centre and you do it in one smooth movement. You wipe the first drop off. And you collect the pipette has a cup which ensures you collect enough blood. So you take the blood and you input it into the blood window of the RDT and that's all the blood that you require. And you just add two drops of buffer into the buffer window. Do not squeeze this like a ketchup bottle, it's very gentle. So you get two small drops that come out and then you let the buffer run over the blood and through the test and you relieve the test for 20 minutes after which you can read the test. You can maybe read the test after 30 minutes but never longer than 30 minutes. And it should move very quickly through. And you wait for 20 minutes before you read the test. So the control line is visible very quickly. As soon as the buffer come, reaches the control line, normally the control line shows up. So that's normally between 20 or 30 seconds. But you can't call the test until you have waited 20 minutes to ensure that nothing comes up at the test line.
there are three possible outcomes that you can get from the test. You can get a positive result, a negative result, or an invalid result. So this is a malaria positive test, and it's a very strong positive test because you can see a very strong line at the test line, and well as the control line is also there. So you can call this a positive result because you've got both a control line and a test line that is very clearly visible. Now this is also a positive result. You can see a very clear control line, however the test line is very faint. But even if you get a faint test line, you have to call it positive because anything that comes along at the test line indicates that there's a malaria infection, so you have to call this a positive test. So this is a negative result because the only thing that has come up is a control line. There is nothing around the test window line, so this is a negative test. So this test is going to be called an invalid test because while you get a test line that has come up, there is no control line and you cannot call a result if you don't see a control line. So this is going to be an invalid test because only the test line has come up. So you have to repeat the test to ensure you get both a control and test line or only a control line. This is another example of an invalid test because neither the control line or the test line have come up and you can only call a test if a control line has come up. Neither the test nor control line have come up. You have to call this invalid and you have to repeat the test. So you have to start the whole process again with a new rapid diagnostic test and wait till you get a result because you cannot send a patient off without a result whether it is positive or negative. Once you have the results you then tell the patient the result and then you refer the patient for treatment if they are malaria positive. If they are malaria negative, they need to go further on in the clinic to find out what might be causing their symptoms because it is not malaria.